We're recording. Hello, I'm Paul Vanuk from Recording Magazine. Welcome to our latest video review. Today, we're taking a look at a pair of unique, lo-fi focused microphones from Placid Audio. The original Copperphone and the new limited edition anniversary Copperphone AV20. The Copperphone was invented in 2001 by Mark Perot, the bass player of the band The Polyphonic Spree. Mark originally created the microphone for the Spree's singer, Tim DeLauder. According to Mark, Tim liked to use a lo-fi AM radio effect in the studio on his vocals via a rack processor. Mark also says that we tried to implement this processor into our live show, but it was always a hassle and the sound engineer never knew exactly when to engage the effect. I thought it would be better to have a separate mic to deliver that sound. It would be easier to hook up, and Tim could just sing into it whenever he wanted. Mark tells me that the original copper phone was made of PVC pipe and duct tape, but after multiple trips to the hardware store, the copper phone as we know it today was born. By 2002, Mark had made multiple copper phone microphones for friends, and then in 2003, he formed the company Lasset Audio. That makes 2023 the 20th anniversary of the company. We first reviewed the copper phone in September 2008. I still love how our reviewer, Justin Peacock, summarized the mic when he wrote, When talking about vibe and sonic funk, the copper phone is king. Its utility is really only limited by your creativity and commitment to experimentation. We took a second look at this visually and sonically unique microphone in our March 2023 issue in celebration of the 20th anniversary of Placid Audio. Also in that review, we checked out the limited edition 20th anniversary copper phone, which has since been dubbed the copper phone AV20. The copper phone measures six inches in length with a 2.5 inch diameter and boasts a hefty 1.7 pound weight. It's made entirely of copper pipe with copper end caps. It features an adjustable U-style aluminum yoke with a brass mic mount, a single layer mesh grill, and an XLR socket. While the copper phone is designed to deliver lo-fi sonics, its nostalgic radio and telephone vibe is achieved differently from many telephone effects mics. Typically, old telephones and many phone style mics make use of a carbon mic element. The copper phone, however, is a dynamic microphone. Internally, it uses a rear vented dynamic mic capsule in a chambered body with mechanical filtering to achieve its tonality. For a more traditional carbon telephone effect sound, Make sure you check out one of Placid Audio's various carbon phone offerings. Sonically, the copper phone is mid-forward and best described as squonky. Unlike a carbon element, the copper phone is not gritty or distorted. Rather, the copper phone is severely band limited, giving it a rather distant and squelchy sound with occasional unpredictable mid-range resonances. The copper phone imparts an instant sense of old school nostalgia to anything it captures and pretty much any source can make use of its vintage field recording aesthetic. And the closer, the better. While it's easy to exploit its hollow mid-range qualities at a distance, the copper phone does have a gentle proximity effect that when worked up close fills out its low mid-range nicely and adds to its versatility. Also, because of the mic's clean circuitry, you can get some surreal tones on quiet sources right up in its grill. <sighs> in our 2008 review, Justin Peacock called the Copper Phone a one-trick pony. When I reviewed the Copper Phone Mini in July 2015, I agreed with Justin, but I added, what a trick it is. Revisiting the Copper Phone eight years later, I actually think both of those statements kind of sell the mic short. Because like any microphone, there's a wide range of nuanced tones that can be coaxed out of it. Beyond volume, source, and proximity, the copper phone is also a mic that likes to play well with other microphones, and it works as a great blending tool, almost like an upper mid-range EQ with a metallic-natured attitude that can add a subtle edge and sheen. Or it can be exaggerated to add an almost broken electronic edge. And all of this is just scratching the surface. Before we check out some more audio examples, let's meet the Copperphone 
AV20. While visually similar, the AV20 is a wholly different, yet complementary mic. The body remains the same, but the yoke is made of machined aircraft aluminum. It has a silver, double-layer mesh grille, and most importantly, you'll notice a two-position silver toggle switch on the top. This engages a fixed high-pass filter, which Mark Perot describes as the dark switch. Digging a little deeper into the design of the AV20, according to Mark, under the hood, we are employing a higher performance, unported transducer with a specialized filter and a hotter output via a step-up transformer. The dark switch allows you to toggle between the standard output and a second-order low-pass filter. Mark also mentions the resulting signal of the 20th anniversary model is slightly different. It has a hotter output and is more direct sounding while maintaining that nuanced, nostalgic character found in the standard copper phone. I was surprised at how different the two models sound. The stock copper phone does have a touch fuller range with an extended round hollow fullness. The AV20 is more dry, rich, and immediate sounding, and it reaches a little bit higher into the upper frequencies than the original. Engaging the dark switch makes the mic much more rounder, smoother, and muffled in a beautiful lo-fi way. You can use it up close for nostalgic intimacy and nuance, or at a distance for vintage-inspired lo-fi sound design. Rather than me talking into each mic, let's check out some examples of both of them in action. One of my favorite uses of the copper phone is on an electric guitar cabinet blended with a common dynamic mic like a Shure SM57. Let's hear what the copper phone and the copper phone AV20 can do in this situation. Next, let's hear the microphones in action on a snare drum alongside an Audix i5.
A few months ago, we did a video review of the Focusrite Claret Plus Octopri. And in that video, I recorded a full band with a full drum set. And I took the opportunity to try the AV20 as part of the drum blend. If you want to check out that whole song in context, you can do so here on our YouTube channel. But let's check out just the drums on their own. As mentioned, both Copperphone mics excel at sound design, and this works even on already recorded tracks. Here, I took a lush synth pad, laid it back through my studio monitors, and I simply mic'd each monitor with one of the Copperphone mics. Let's check that out. Of course the Copperphone mics excel at that kind of vintage, nostalgic, field recording vibe. To check this out, I went over to Hamtone Audio, where producer and musician Jeff Hamilton sang and played acoustic guitar into a Neumann U87, as well as both Copperphone mics. This one's called France Blues. It's an old murder ballad, going back to the 20s. Ready to rock? Here we go. Have you ever took a trip, baby, down the mobile line? Hey, Lordy, Mama, Mama, hey, Lordy, Papa, Papa, howling about the mobile line. It's a road to ride to ease your troubling mind. Got a letter this morning, baby, tell you what it read. Mama, mama, hey, Lordy, Papa, Papa, howling about the way it read. Oh, come on, come on, pretty girl, your love ain't dead. Well, when I 
I die, gonna make a stop by France. Hopefully, these examples give you just a taste of what the Placid Audio Copperphone mics can do for your creativity. One thing to note, while the AV20 is a limited edition, Mark let us know that it will be made in small batches for as long as he can source the specialized parts. Right now, Mark says he has enough of the rare parts to make about a hundred of the Copperphone AV20 models. That might sound like a lot, but if you want one, I'd suggest getting your order in sooner rather than later. If you'd like to learn more about either microphone, stop by placidaudio.com. Also, be sure to check out my review of both microphones, along with an interview with Mark Perot in the March 2023 issue of Recording Magazine. If you enjoyed this video review, be sure to give us the thumbs up below. Better yet, subscribe to Recording's YouTube channel for further video reviews, product comparisons, how-to videos, and more. Then, stop by recordingmag.com for the best in all things recording, where you can subscribe to our print publication, which is now in its 37th year. We'll see you soon.